Podcast by Friday, episode 17. There's the whole section in Think and Grow Rich about the, the power of the mastermind. They outlined two questions that you had to answer in every mastermind group. And that was the basis of what our mastermind was. Podcast by Friday with Bill Griggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people to create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination and to get their voices heard. I am Kingsley Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And we are the hosts of Podcast by Friday. The mastermind may be defined as a coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. I've been involved in several masterminds throughout the years, and they've really helped to grow my business. I'm Bill Griggs, and I talk with my co-host, Kingsley Grant, about the power of the mastermind. There's something that can do differently, and I'm, I'm thinking now about you know, paid mastermind, a coaching group, all those things. Like, you know, and I was listening to a, a podcast with um, Amy Porterfield this morning, just about the idea of um, taking some bold moves and bold risks. Just, just, I mean, bold moves, but don't do too many at one time. But the point is that just do it anyway and see what happens. And I've been toying with the idea of doing a paid mastermind for some time now, for a long, long time. And of course, that coaching group from maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago now. But I think, you know what, I think I'm going to put it up and see if anybody's interested. And who knows if they are, they are willing to pay to um, get in. I haven't set a fee. I mean, I haven't decided on a number yet, but I know it's going to be paid. Then make a small mastermind and just see how it goes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's one of those things. I've often said that I, I, I think that the only way that a mastermind um, can function longer term is if each member has some skin in the game. You know? Yeah, it's, um, I agree. It's a paid um, thing because things that you pay for yeah. Particularly if it's something that you have to continue paying for. Yeah. Um you take a little more seriously and you try and um uh, try and attend get your money's worth out of it. Um if you if you're in a mastermind that costs you I don't know, pick a number. Um Well, Amy Porterfield for example, her mastermind with, with Mario uh Marie Folio, I think her name is when she did a couple of years back, she said it was seventeen thousand dollars and she didn't say how long it was but it was seventeen thousand dollars her mastermind was and she said it was the best she said she had to figure out how to find a way to pay it each month and you know she paid she couldn't pay it all at one time but she said at the time she could not but she said it was the best seventeen thousand dollars she spent because what it has done for her is open up opportunities and um, relationships and her business would not have been what it is today you know so in the lady who start meet meet Edgar was in that group at the time, and so they have that relationship now. But the point is that it was seventeen grand. That's pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. a lot more than. Uh, um, but the re- if the results speak for themselves, I mean, Amy Porterfield is obviously very mm-hmm. uh, successful at what she does, and um, you know the income that she's generating. It's incredible. Um, yeah, it is incredible. And and that's, you know, that's the work. Um, you know, if, if it's working, it's working. Now, the, the funny part, a lot of people clutch up on, on a number like 17,000. You know, they're like, oh, 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 uh, yeah. I, you know, I can't, I can't afford that. Yeah. The, the real test, I guess, of an entrepreneur isn't whether you can, you know, it's what you say in those moments. Uh, yeah. It's like, I can't afford that, or, okay, how can okay. I afford I, that, right. you know? Right. And, I agree. Um, you know, I, I shared that story with you a while ago when I was uh, driving to um, Toronto to go to a, a CNC meetup. And I heard... Uh, uh, Laura Langmire on the radio and, you know, stopped, pulled over and ordered her book and he got talking to one of her people. Um, and later on, when they told me what her program cost, I had one of those reactions because it was, I think mm-hmm. it was 
It wasn't even as high as Amy's uh, mastermind. It was it was like ten grand. And uh, you know the the person on the phone says, "Well, ten grand um, is is nothing if you're going to be making a million dollars in mm. the next three to you know three years." And when you put it in that perspective, you know, if I handed you ten thousand dollars, you know, if you handed me ten thousand dollars and I handed you back a million dollars, would you do it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, right away. <laughs> yeah, and how often would you do it? Yeah, every time, right? Yeah, but <laughs> but your you know your your mind just seizes up on that. It's like <laughs> yeah, ten thousand dollars. Uh, you know, that's a lot of money yeah. to, to a lot of people. And, but if you, if you break it down, okay. So let's say the goal was to make a million dollars over, over, over five years. Okay. Now a million dollars divided by five is somebody help me with the math. Is that 200,000? A million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. That's 200,000. Yeah. Okay. Per year. So the goal is I'm assuming this mastermind class is, is a yearly fee of 10,000, not a, a one time fee, but you never know. Right. So in those five years, you will have invested 50,000. But in each of those years, you would have made 200,000. If you are, you know, if the, if the if the numbers are right and you're working the program. Correctly. Okay. So you'd be up $150,000 per year on your investment. You know, that that would be your excess. Right. Right. Times five. (laughs) That's, um, yeah, just do the math on that. That's that's, 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 that's huge. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's it's one way of thinking about it. Now, whether whether you are the person who will follow through, whether the course that you're taking is a valid one that has done it before, uh, you know, and has is results. I mean, because anybody can give you a theory course, right? Of course. You know, I could, uh, for instance, I could take all the music theory courses I want. That wouldn't make me Beethoven. <laughs> but. <laughs> But if I was taking music theory from Beethoven, maybe I'd have a better shot at being Bill, you know. <laughs> you know, might not, yeah. you know, because Beethoven's already done it, you know. Right. Um, right. I, I, sorry to mix metaphors, but that, you know. No, but it's true. I mean, but, I mean, Jason and Jeremy, they paid $25,000 for the mastermind with, um, what's the guy's name? <sighs> I said Joel Polish, not Joel Polish, but this guy is very much, I mean, he's pretty much talking about a lot of that in this circle, but 25 grand he charges for his mastermind. Mm-hmm. And they pay that, but the return on that is, it's really, like he does describe, you know, it's how many times, how many, how many times over what they paid. It's a no brainer. I mean, for people who have that kind of, um, number one, they have, you know, how do you make it happen? Number one, and actually, and actually he doesn't take people in his mastermind group who are not making a certain amount of money per year, you know, they're not, you know, seven figures, and they're not making seven figures. They're, he's not, they're not allowed in that group. So obviously people are making that money and want to take their business to the next level. Yeah. One of the, one of the difficulties that um, often arises when people talk about um, getting into paid masterminds and, and getting, you know, uh, out there to, to try and generate income is that they never take the first step. Mm-hmm. Um, they never make the first dollar. Right. They never do everything that is described in a process. They pick and choose. And that's, that is like one of the, the fatal flaws. Oh, yeah, they say to do this, but I'm not going to. Um, that, that I, that I see people making, you know, the biggest mistake. When somebody's showing you, their systems and their processes. They're showing you a roadmap that has already yeah. proven that works for them. And to think that you, who've never done it before, are going to uh, come up with a better system before you've tried any system 
It, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's like um, if you worked at McDonald's. Now, McDonald's is arguably the most successful small business in America. Think about that for a minute. How many McDonald's yeah. restaurants are there? They, you know, how many people have built their their fortunes with you know making a McDonald's franchise, etc. So, whether it's the most successful or, or whatever, that's irrelevant. They have been successful over years and decades and decades, right? Billions and billions in serve, and it's because of the system that they have in place. Uh, every McDonald's makes the fries the same way. They make the hamburgers the same way. They use the same. Um, materials and they go through a sequence of events uh having some young kid come in as the new fry cook at mcdonald's and wanting to do things his way eh, i think i'll just cook the burgers until they look done or uh, you know instead of waiting you know mcdonald's says you cook them so many minutes on one side and you flip them over and cook them so many minutes on the other side. Or at least that's what I guess they do, because I've never worked there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's kind of the way that they, they do things. It's, you know, we, we we put the same amount of condiments on each one because we have a squirt gun that delivers the same amount of condiments on each uh, of these burgers so that they all taste the same. Mm-hmm. And that was the key to their success, doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, with the same recipe, the same parts, um, and you gotta kind of approach business that way. Yeah, I think I think like um, you know, I was read something recently where they said Starbucks is about to replace a McDonald's or try to you know it's up there as far as one of the most successful franchises in type of uh, operations that systemized and so on. Mm-hmm. But I think you, the point is made that they're so systemized and um, they've done it and they've 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 shown the the success of that system and it works. Obviously, you know, you, you want to find a person or someone who is doing something like that um, who you want to learn from because they, they've learned, you know. But you know, I also find sometimes that, like when um, I listened to Amy Porterfield this morning, she was in this group. She said in her mastermind group that she was in, um, I mean, obviously she was like a small fry in comparison to all those who were bigger time people were there. But what happened, she realized, it's not so much about the fact that it's just really the people who are there who are in business, who are moving forward in that direction and have the hot seat idea. And they will call you out and try to help you to um, make sure your business is really working. But these people who are surrounding her have some business, you know, they all may not have all the same knowledge, but every person there is, in, is putting in something of what they know that help this person become better and maybe point out some things that they would not have thought about before in their business idea and for them to implement those things, you know? So I think she was in, she was probably talking about in my, my takeaway was by surrounding herself with the right people and picking their brains and getting ideas from them. And that group was what was tremendous for her, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you're the smartest person in the group, you're in the wrong group. Yes. Uh, You know, you want to, uh, Reach upwards, um, not sideways. I think when yeah. it comes to choosing the group that you're in, you you want to choose people who who have done what it is that you're trying to accomplish. You know, instead of drink amateurs. I, now, I I ran a mastermind group, a, a non paid mastermind group for about five years, which consisted of folks from the uh, internet business mastery community, mostly. How many people are in that group? Uh, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we start. Do you start with the, with the four group, four per person group that does that recommended? No, we um, when we started, we had this. This was before Academy too, where where they give you the details on on how to form a mastermind group and you know best practices and things. Mm. We started with about eight people. And uh, eight people actually uh, ended up being too many because the meetings were going very, very long. Mm -hmm. Um, We didn't do the hot seat or anything like that. What we did was we took and we based this off of what we read in Think and Grow Rich. There's the whole section in Think and Grow Rich uh, about the, the power of the mastermind. 
and they outlined two questions that you had to answer in every mastermind group. And that was the basis of what our mastermind was. Um, the first one was, what are you, you know, what are you doing right now to build your business? Mm -hmm. And the second one was, um, what do you need help with? Right. You know, pretty simple. Uh, yeah. But that was the basis for our mastermind. The, the problem was with eight people. Uh, yeah, that was too big. Yeah. It, it could go very long. And so um, of the original people that started in that group, more than half of them left. But other people came in. And we we hovered around six members for quite a while. And um, over the course of the five years that it was was, was going, uh, six seemed to be about the the. the, the number that we were maintaining as we were going. Uh, five would have been optimum, actually. Uh, but six six was manageable. People would stay in for a while, they'd get some information, and then they'd leave. Or they would, you know, they'd stay in, you know, way way past when they should have. Uh, yeah. And not do anything. You know, hey, what are, what are, what are you doing this month? Uh, well, nothing's really changed. Um, okay. What do you need help with? Well... I'm not really sure. That's not what you... <laughs> if those are your answers, then, you know, it's time to move on. Um, you know, what am I doing? Well, this week I I uh, learned how to put up an autoresponder. Oh, great. What do you need help with? Putting up an autoresponder. Uh, <laughs> you know, or, you know, uh, okay, now they've got the autoresponder up. What messages do I send? You know, is... How, how do I build a funnel? You know, whatever it was that you were, you know, trying to achieve, you know, you, you had to think about that. So, so if you, a couple of things I want to ask this. So you, if you were to do something like that again, so if you were had your task with that, um, I heard you, one thing you mentioned you would do it differently or probably would be better is to have a five people, you know, I mean, say you four to six people there about in the mastermind, but um, I've heard different, you know, people have talked about the idea of having more people just in case, Everybody don't show up one day. You don't feel like you only have two people in the mastermind group that day. But I think when there's a paid aspect to it, the chance is more people will, pay, will show up because they know it's a um, is that you're putting money out there. Would you think would a time um, a time element to that as far as the length of how long it will last would that make a difference? You think as well? Um, I think so. Um, I don't think that the the time uh, involved is is the biggest um is the biggest hurdle most people come the attendance is um because people are busy and they have to make um uh, attendance a, a priority um if they're going to gain anything from it what you know if i were if i were creating a, a new mastermind group um to 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 go well first okay in the past uh i've gotten the members from inside of internet business mastery okay mm -hmm. which is predominantly a group of beginning um folks who want who are or who are starting internet based businesses or or whatever okay um, i would not use that group as the basis for my next mastermind, because I'm beyond that. Um, okay. And I, and I don't I don't mean that in in a derogatory way. No, no. I, I still hang out in Internet Business Mastery and comment and, and help people when I can and do do things like that, and I learn things still. But the majority of the of the of the people in that group haven't taken that first step and have started earning online income well i've done that mm -hmm. so I'm, i i would go fishing where the fish were i would go to a group that had only proven internet entrepreneurs or podcasters or whatever the focus of my mastermind was i go with people who had a set criteria that was measurable and reportable and part of part of the qualification Notice this is different because before it was, hey, anybody who wants to come. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of the qualification for me would be 
that you are willing to share, you know, an income report, you know, to prove that you're doing what you're doing or to, you know, show, show your website. Because one of the things that, um, is the basis of a, of a mastermind is it's that, that people are, are working together towards a, uh, sh- a common goal in harmony. Right. So the mastermind shouldn't be a competition as far as, uh, you know, Oh, Bill's doing, you know, he's selling this, doing that. I'm going right. to copy that and, you know, whatever. It shouldn't be about that because in a perfect world, none of your niches or niches, depending on how how cool you want to sound, um, right. should be identical. You know, um, if you did a mastermind group that was all CNC, would you know, CNC uh, router people, you might have some conflict. Um because, you know, we're all doing the same thing. If you're from the same town. But right. the, the world is so big that um, we could do the same types of businesses in Cleveland and Cincinnati and uh, New York and Pennsylvania and uh, Washington, wherever. And not really compete against each other. And frankly, no two people want to make the same thing anyway. Right. So it's not it's probably not as big an issue as, you know, it sounded when I first stated that. But but the point was you're you're working to help each other to to grow. And uh, you know so that is the first thing I, I, I would do. I, I would qualify the people. Let me ask you that uh, so, okay, on the, on that same note, you are you saying then that what I'm hearing you say, for example, I'm thinking of people who want to do like a career change, but it's in the area of, it's not like a job. You know, some people, I think some people's mistake, they think immediately a career change is like, okay, I want to do a job such as, um, you know, go to work for whatever case might be. Um, IBM, I'm changing my career from, from what I was doing at a school teacher. You know, I'm thinking in essence about people who want to do a career change into something that they're most passionate about so wherever they, wherever they find that so it may be that they find that at you know ibm or at um at apple but it's something that they are now doing because that's their passion right it may fall under the idea of a, an entrepreneurship type of a change but it may not be so what i'm hearing you're saying then I, let me ask this question this way how would you Make that where again, equally minded as if you know they're all focused on something of similar. You know, the, the focus is similar. How would you then do that? In what way? How would you? Because I mean, you have different people or different. Um, you know, they may want to become. They may want to do their own artwork as a, and sell it online. They may want to become an author. They may want to become a a coach or a speaker. But it's their passion. Does that sound like term to be too much at? So would that fit the definition of what you describe about a mastermind and what it does? Um, if you ask most people what their passion is, do you believe that they can give you an answer? Mm, most people no. Okay. So you would have to take them through a process in order to try and figure out what their passion is. Yes. Okay. Some people never figure that out. I know. <laughs> um, you know, what drives you in the morning to get out of bed? What What is it, the one thing, you know, other than, you know, wife and family and, and all of that, that you can't, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to rephrase the way I was going to say that because it, and it just became weird. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the you know the one thing that you know makes you want to get up out of bed every morning to to rush off and and work on? Right. Much better than what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could see right. I got that led that led to. <laughs> yeah, let's let's keep this G rated. Uh, all right. So you know what is that one thing? Um, and many people, you know, don't know. I mean, 
if you know if all your work was done your 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 financial needs were met and and uh you had no external stress and you had a free day what is that one thing you just itching to go do mm. that may be your passion right you know maybe it's maybe it's you want to get in the boat and go bass fishing or you know maybe it's you want to go out in the in the workshop and cut metal into new and incredible shapes or maybe it's uh you want to go and practice your ballet or whatever that thing is everybody's passion is different um yeah so it's a, it's irrelevant that that your passions match up because that's never going to be the case generally Everybody's right. passionate about different things, so uh, you know why why hurt yourself trying to align several people's passions? Instead, you should look at how these people are acting to make their passion a reality. That should be the the, the key deciding factor, I think. You know, are they taking steps to to get a chance to do their passion? So it's basically then it's the the more the the idea of how to help them is to identify what the passion might be that they would want to work on and then how to make that a reality. Yeah. Would that be correct? Yeah. If if you want a beginner's mastermind group, that's that's basically what it is. Okay. In most cases. I don't think you want a beginner's mastermind group. I don't think so either. That's not what I want either. You know, if you were passionate about helping people find what their new passion is, then maybe you do want to teach beginners over and over again. Um, is that the case? Um, to some degree, it is. Because what I find, is, I go back to the, the model, the IBM model. And what, um, what we are taught and we're, we heard a lot of was the idea of, you know, bigger, beginners to ask intermediates, intermediates, yeah, intermediates. And, I remember I listened to Jeremy and they were going back and forth and saying how people were saying, you know, don't focus on the beginners, go to the more the veterans, the experience and so on. And they felt like where they find most success was going to the beginners and, and leaning a little bit toward the intermediates, you know. There was that's where the, the sweet spot was. And and most people who were at the time going through were similar saying that's where they were at, because you find more people, people who have like for example, you for you, you know you're been you have been there, done that. You know you've kind of passed that. St- you're not kind of you passed that stage. So for you, you're probably looking at and and not there's not many of you out there, but a whole lot of others out there who possibly are more. You know, there's they're they're buying stuff and paying for stuff that there has no meaning, has no value. You are going to be more selective because you've been down the road. You know you've kind of um been you know, been selective. So you're going to really be careful where you put your stuff, your money at. It has to be high, you know, high end in that the people who are going to be in that group, like I said earlier, have are above. You know, they're really doing way above where you are. Mm-hmm. And so that's where you're. But that, that on that spectrum, you have a small, I believe, it's very tight, small uh, percentage wise. We have a broader array of people or a larger percentage who are still trying to figure out how do I make that leap? How do I move from where I am? to really begin my journey mm-hmm. and what would I need to do and I start that whole process. That's where I think, um, of, of where I'm thinking, that's where I would like to go, you know, with those people. So you're at the, you're at the person who's already decided that they're trying to do this and they're, they're in motion, but they, they are trying to get to the next level, I, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you uh, a related story um, about the mastermind experience. When the membership to the group was starting to, you know, to dwindle, you know, people had fallen off for attrition, or you know, the, you know, one guy would get a new job and move away, or you know, uh, a new baby would come in and they decide they had no, you know, no more time for for the group. I would, I was the one who was going out to find replacement members. So I would go through the academy and I'd look through um, the Internet Business Mastery Academy, which is, you know, the group that we belong to on Facebook. Um, And I would see 
who's doing stuff? You know, hey, I just launched my new book, um, and it's already done this. And, you know, that was really cool. And then I had this course that came up, and, you know, I went to that, and I did things. And I'd look, and I'd say, who are the people who are doing things? Who are the ones who are actually, you know, following the 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 teachings inside of the academy, you know, who are actually doing things. And then I, you know, I'd follow their profile for a while. And if I thought that they were a good match and to me, a good match was somebody who's actually doing something, not just talking about it. I would reach out to them to join the mastermind. And, you know, I'd say, Hey, we, we have a mastermind that meets, uh, you know, I think you'd be a good fit. Are you interested? Nine times out of ten, they were interested. And, okay. you know, some some would, would come and we'd say, hey, you know, this is the time when we meet. Well, I can't make that happen. Okay. They were done. I, yeah. You know. Because the, the reality is, if there is a group that you need the information from and they meet at a specific time, you're going to move things around to get to that specific time, at least temporarily. Right. If, right. if not, then, you know, it wasn't a priority for you and, you know, move on. Don't waste our time. Don't waste your time. Uh, and that was kind of the, the approach I took in, in finding people. Now, Kingsley, you may rem- recall when we first met, or you may not, but, <laughs> but we had uh, had one or two brief comments back and forth in the academy right? before we met. And do you remember, I, I've told you this, what was one of my goals when I went to the podcast movement mm-hmm. conference? Yeah, it's to um, connect, to meet with, meet with me and uh, for us to connect there. Why do you think that was? I guess because you saw what it was that I brought to the table and, and a little bit more about me and, the, the inf- you know, so you wanted to make exactly. a connection. Exactly. You, um, you were a mover. You were, right. You were doing the do. And right. I said, I got to meet this guy and, and find out. You know, are we are are we compatible? Can we work in harmony towards a common goal? Right. That was instant to me. I knew that. You know, once once we met, that was like, oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, here we are. It's two years later. Things are working out pretty cool. The yeah. Only, you know, we each have things that we're trying to work on in our business that we have been unsuccessful at accomplishing so far. Right. But I think we're both further ahead than we would have been alone. I agree. 100%. 100%. You know, and we, we keep striving to, to improve. And, you know, I know I've improved since uh, since I've come into the relationship uh, uh, with you. And I... I, I know, myself. Yeah. And I can see... I that. <laughs> you know, I can see your, your accomplishments already. So, it's you know, even if you don't believe in them, uh, I know that they're there. Uh, and I know you believe in them. Oh yeah, uh, it's a funny. I had an interview with um, this guy Wally Carmichael from um, Men of Abundance, and it was Thursday, I think Thursday or Friday. He interviewed me for his show, so he. Um, so I was telling my wife afterwards our conversation that you and I have had in the past about um, sometimes when you know you don't see people, you don't see yourself the way people see you, right? And the way he opened up the show and started talking to me um, and the things he said, I said, um, "Wow." The view out there is really sometimes you need to. And I, I mean, I talk about this many times that we need to listen to because we there's a blind side of all of us that we don't see in ourselves. That people who see that we need to not dismiss or, or push it away, but realize that there's some things we can ponder and take to heart because there's something of value there and, and also valid as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I kind of circle back around our conversation. I was telling my wife, I said, you know, honey, how how we can have these um, experiences and every now and then these phone calls or these interactions and so on that really remind you and, and say to you, you need to probably think more about what others have said and uh, people, you know, who you're kind of, um, not, not every person that come and say something, obviously, but people who you have certain kind of, um, you know, look up to and, you know, have respect for mm-hmm. because, there are some things there that could be helpful. And I just really received that and just kind of say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take what he says and see it as such. And then 
I was on a, this happened to jump on Greg Walker's, I don't know if you know him on, on social media, the big dreamer. Yeah. Right. Doing his, um, his video thing he was doing this past, I don't know, yesterday or day before yesterday. And he was talking to me and I jumped on immediately as I jumped on. I mean, he just kind of stopped and interrupted and say, oh, you know, gave me a big shout out and tell people to follow me. And that was went on and on and on. I said, wow, you know, just again, the reminder of people who, who sees you in a certain way larger than life kind of thing where you may not see that, but how you need to let that register. And, um, to, to, cause it, 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 it does help in those times when you, you start kind of, um, you know, either doubting certain things or feeling kind of, uh, you know, but it's again, going back to your point that when we f- seek out those people who are like that, like you say, you sought me out, I think the same idea, we can so- seek out people who we know and selectively invite them into the process. But here's my question I was going to ask you earlier when you were talking, you're talking about how you had to let your gr- the people from, left- from your group, you would go after certain people and ask them to you invite them in. That was a free mastermind. Mm-hmm. I wonder what difference it would have made in the approach of how you would approach going after those people and invite them in. Then it would have been you know, if it was a paid mastermind, then it was when it was a free mastermind. I think the only difference would be uh, in your mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a, uh, I know that sounded glib, but I think it's, it's true. I'm going to make one assumption about anybody who would be inside of a of a group like internet business mastery, for instance, one, they want to be in business on the internet and two, they want to improve themselves. So knowing those two facts leads me to believe that they're, they're looking for similar things that I am looking for. Yes. And, uh, if I recognize somebody has a certain set of, of skills and ambitions and motivations and whatever. And I say to him, Hey, um, Kingsley, uh, I noticed you've been killing it. And, uh, I, you know, I think, uh, you'd be a good fit for this mastermind group that I'm in. It's paid mastermind, but, um, you know, we don't, we don't just, uh, take this to everybody. We're looking for people who can work, you know, in harmony with us to, you know, help us achieve our common goals. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. I'll get you more information. But I think you'd be a good fit. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now now it's on you. I mean, was that a hard sell? No. No. No, it's a very very soft sell. I think very honored. Of course. That's what I think. It feels very like, you know, (laughs) VIP-ish. Yeah. I mean, I... You know, it's it's like uh, somebody coming up to you at a fraternity rush. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, here's here's the secret handshake. Come on, join us. Um, yeah. You know, it's either yes or a no. Yeah. And if it's a no, hey, we just saved a whole lot of time. You know, let's move on. Sometimes it's a maybe. Um, right. You know, that can become a yes later. But... Um, Typically, the ones that are maybes don't don't work out. Right. It, it's it's got to be not only a yes, but a yes, a, yes or a no. Uh, a heck yes. Yeah. That's kind of my, um, you know, my take on it. Um, one thing I want to get back to that you 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 were mentioning about seeing ourselves as others see us. So you know, I've been slogging along um, in the maker community for for years and just doing. Uh, you know, what it is that I do. And I'm starting to get a little traction, but I never quite appreciate just how much traction. The other day, I was on YouTube, and there was a live event going on with with uh, one fellow who I consider to be a leader in this space. And I had never tuned into his show live or anything. I'd seen his, uh, his videos or whatever. So, But I get into this, you know, this live thing, you know, it's, uh, what is it, Google Plus Live um, event? Uh, YouTube Live or oh, is a webinar? 
it was it was a it was a, a YouTube live event. So okay. I think they're done through Google Plus, but I'm not real sure. Anyway, so I so I get on there and they can see who joined, you know, who okay. came into the group, and uh, the 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 guy that I was um, watching is he Swan is his name, and you know, really cool cool guy makes a lot of incredible stuff. He stops what he's doing and says, "Hey, Bill Griggs just came on." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so, so I'm kind of blown away that the guy that I've been watching for inspiration, not only I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he knew who I was and he was like excited that I was online. And they kind of stopped what they were doing and and shot a couple of questions at me, which I was totally blown away, you know. So not only did he recognize me, but all the rest of the panel recognized me as well. And uh, I guess thought that I was, uh, um, which I am, I guess. Uh, and that's leader, why you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, a, le- a, a, a leader in the field that, that yes. I'm doing and, you know, acknowledge that. So it was really kind of cool. Um, you know, what I do to follow up is another thing. You know, do I, do I reach out and then try and make a... Uh, a, a friendship with with these guys, or do I, um, you know, maybe invite them on my show, or vice versa? You know, mm-hmm. who knows? But when you see yourself the way others see you, it can be a, it can be mind blowing. Really, it really it's true because it it kind of took me by surprise. So you never know what your actions are are netting until you know you look through the eyes of others. No, that's a good point you're making. I think it's, it's really true because, um, and, and and then when you do, it's to be okay with it and not somehow feel like, you know, who am I to be? I think you've kind of earned it. You've worked hard. You've, you know, done the work that you never thought you, that even people have watched and seen and which kind of adds up over time, you know, to make you this kind of person in people's eyes. And so that's why when I think about the mastermind, I paid mastermind, I think that, you know, uh, I think I've heard, heard, heard a couple of things you said, which I think, you know, was, was kind of um, the reminders, you know, of course, I'm going to reach out to people that you think you see who possibly are, you know, like I mentioned before that, Di- you know, Diane, I introduced her to in, in, in uh, Chicago, but she and I have been, you know, communicating. So we went to that event and we've been talking uh, mm-hmm. and she's been working on some stuff in, um, you know, in her, as a medical doctor, she's been working on some things that, she wanted to push forward, and so I just was, I got an email from her yesterday, and I emailed her. I mean, you know, we don't talk as often, but she she said to me, like, you know, Kings, I really want to be in a mastermind because I really know that would be helpful to me. And um, so I, I know one person who possibly would be interested, and she has, you know, of course, what she's how she's pursuing her path would be um, it, it's it's. We're, we're, we're all pursuing a similar path, but in just different veins, you know, mm-hmm. like you describe. So by reaching out to people like that individually and say, hey, you know what, I'm starting a mastermind. Here's a, here are the criteria to hear what this one, what's going to happen there. But here is my pay mastermind. Is this something that you are going to be a part of? And here, you know, mm-hmm. are just, you know, you'd be a good fit. I think you'd be a good fit for this mastermind and so on. And the, I think that's a commitment to a three month, a three month to six month commitment, at least so be, people can. You will learn; they will learn. At least you be, but you will not be a painful forever one year if you're not clicking. You know. Hmm. Um. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'd do the three month or four month or or anything. I would. I. I would put them in because you know masterminds take a time to to get going. It's but, true. They do. They do. But, they do. You know some. Some people are, you know, may be comfortable with that. Um, right. I I don't know. Um, you know, I, I listened to, I, I think, I'm not sure if you listened to that um, a podcast episode with Amy, Jamie Masters and also um, Amy Porterfield about Mastermind. And, you know, and also I think, uh, I think it's, um, I, anyway. have, I haven't heard that um, particular episode, although I did hear um, Amy Porterfield mention it in the last one that I listened to of hers. Okay. So I hadn't gone back to see. Right. I, I think what she did, the, the big takeaway was, um, Jamie was recommending big time that you 
number one, be in a mastermind yourself. Have a, an idea how it's, what is it, how it happens there, you know, and and so on. And a paid mastermind. And she, I think what what she recommended was, you know, once you've done that, you kind of get your feet wet. You have an idea of what a mastermind runs. She recommended a, a paid mastermind, you know, and um, you know, make sure it's very clear what the mastermind is going to be done. And she, they did op, they did suggest some options of doing some around a shorter period of time and some a longer period of time and then describe describe why mm. you know yep yep i you know i i would probably say that that makes sense um because their their um focus was on getting people into their first mastermind and that probably makes makes perfect sense you know mm-hmm. since i'd already done you know five years of masterminding i right have a different slant on what it is that I'd looking for for a mastermind and I I know that my next one's going to cost uh yeah it's just got to you know uh if I you know here's a thought exercise that'd be cool you know just imagine your uh your uh, you know your your ultimate mastermind of living people you know who would you include in that uh, of people who are alive today, and then you could do the same thing with uh, living or dead. You know, who who you would have lo- loved to have been in a mastermind with. Um, then you can you know try and reach out to the living. Uh, you know, you never know um, who who you can get into your mastermind until you ask them. Uh, I know Pat Flynn's in multiple masterminds. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he must find value in them because he's in them. Yeah. Yeah, and like you say, he's in there with, with purpose. He have a like he's each mastermind serves a different purpose for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think I who it was that I heard did the very same thing about the um, people who are living or dead, and uh, you know I think it's in that book. Um, was it Millionaire, Millionaire Messenger? Oh, it's been in a lot of books. It's been Millionaire Messenger. It's in, also Ask. in a, It's in Think and Grow Rich. Grow Rich. Yeah, Think and Grow Rich is yeah. also in, yeah, Where right. They, yeah. they talk about your. I don't remember what term they use, but um, you know, it's like a war council, basically. You know. Yeah, yeah, in, in Think and Grow Rich. Yes, yeah. I. Yes. You know who 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 was on your council of advisors? Maybe Gandhi. Uh, yes. Maybe, you know, uh, you know whoever it was. You know. Uh, Abraham Lincoln might be in there, um, uh, you know, it, whoever. Uh, and what, what would they say Ford. and all that stuff? Like that. Yeah, I remember that. It was pretty, yeah, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, um, that's, you know, it, that that's one of those esoteric things. I mean, you know, I don't know how much time people actually spend doing that, um, but maybe more than I think. Uh, and maybe more successful people spend a lot of time doing that. You know, up to now, I haven't done it very well, so <laughs> neither have I. Can't I speak for the results, <laughs> but you know, it, I I figure if it's in a book, in several books by several people who are successful, more successful than I am, uh, there's probably some truth to it. Yeah, I think it's, it goes back to the idea of. Um almost like visionary and then saying, well, you know, what do you want to see happen? And, and uh, be able to put that out there and then worry about the how to will come later on, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's like this vision board thing. That we- yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> you know, um, I, 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 I kill myself because I put a couple of things on the wall that I wanted in the vision board. No idea how I was going to make them happen. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things is sitting out in my garage right now. Uh, and the other two, I already know. Now, the second one, if I chose to go for it, I already know how to make that one happen. And mm. the third one is just a matter of of uh, using the first thing that was on my vision board to generate enough income to go get it. <laughs> so, I mean, all three of these things are, you know, within a couple of months of of uh, of. Uh, being achieved already. I need to put more stuff up. It's my 2017 vision. <laughs> Cause these, these 2016 ones look like they were solved. Mm. This is kind of cool. Yeah. So, but, um, where would you say most of yours 
even though it does involve getting some training equipment to do the end result, the end result of what you're on your vision board and you're, you're talking about this now had to do with financial goals. Mm-hmm. But so the, the means how to get that is what you were kind of saying. Those things kind of came into being as far as how to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I had, it, it's funny. I, now I'll tell you what was on my vision board in, in case you care. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, 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 I wish I could show you mine. I think next time when my computer's running properly, I'd probably pick up and show you mine up there. It's really interesting, but go ahead. I'm going to save the best for last. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the things that was on my vision board is the uh, Tormach CNC milling machine and enclosure that um, I now have in my garage uh, as of last week. Um, it was... Uh, a tool that I know would help grow my business because it would allow me to make my parts uh, in-house in smaller batches more frequently um, and to develop other things. So I I knew I wanted one of those. So, um, but I had no idea how to pay for that. And that all arranged itself as, as in, in the wildest ways. Mm -hmm. Um, through a combination of taking machines that I already owned that I wasn't using and selling them, I was able to raise a down payment. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, my current machine that I had that wasn't quite up to the the task I was asking for it, somebody came along to buy that at at my asking price. And uh, one of the parts that I needed on this machine that uh, I didn't want to finance also came available at the same time. And so when it came time to do that transaction, it was like a three, three way swap. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I drove down to Pennsylvania yeah. and met one guy and uh, sold him my machine, put it in his van, took the money that he gave me, walked across the street <laughs> to the other guy who had this other part. I went, paid him, I took the part and still had money in my more money in my pocket than when I when I left, <laughs> you know. So it was and it was just Crazy. like bang, bang, bang. You know, everything was happening. So you know that all could come together. The second thing on my my vision board is a larger machine than the first one, um, which uh, hasn't come to fruition yet. But the the last and it costs quite a bit more than the other. But um, the last conversation I had with the salesman for this particular machine, he told me of a solution that had I known about it at the time, I may not have stopped at the first machine. I might have gone for the second. So, <laughs> bam, already I know that that is a possibility if I want it. You know, And it may be still a reality in the future. And the third thing in the last, I say the, the best for last, uh, my wife and I were out shopping one day in a furniture store, and uh, m- my wife is, uh, has been redecorating the house, and she's been she has a, a love for wooden furniture because her all of her um, uncles were carpenters and things. Anyway, we were in this Adirondack furniture store, and there's this particular type of chair called the Morris chair, and it's very famous from the arts and crafts period. Anyway. They had one in this store with a little footstool, and my wife sat down in that chair, and she just, poof, lit off like a Roman candle. She was just glowing from ear to ear, and I took a picture of her sitting in that chair. And so I know now that I'm going to use the funds, some of the funds that I get from uh, using this machine that I got from my vision board. And we're going to have that chair, and it's going to be in a surprise to her when she gets it. And I, I hope that she's still as much in love with that chair. <laughs> she gets right. it, you know, but uh, that's going to be one of those things. And it's you know knowing what it is that I want and to see her, you know, that smile on her face, and to know how she feels about that chair. And it looks perfect. So that I have a picture of my wife sitting in that chair up on my vision board. And uh, I'm going to make that happen. That's cool. That's cool. So, and, and I think that's I think the idea. Um, like I have, you know, I don't, I don't have as many 
I don't have any personal pictures like that or stuff, but I do have some overall um, pictures of my vision board that kind of caps it. It, it can ca- it captures what it is that my wife and I want to do, and something we have forecasted, and so on. And I think what I, by me even having that there, it's a reminder of why I need to do something differently. Why the ideas of even a mastermind, you know, I've thought about it before, is now back into my mind and forefront of my mind. The coaching group is back now. They, I've thought about it before, but it has, I think, come back around. It's always been there, but it's this idea is now percolating. It's fresh in my mind, and I'm into those financial goals that I'm working on, which I'm not, which is very, very helpful. And um, it is now what's coming to me is that here's how you can make it happen. And when I look at the numbers, the reverse engineering, and say what needs to happen each month. I say okay now I, and it now it's almost like there's something about that's really interesting that's electric you know almost like electric why uh, you know that song about electric slide it's electric this is like the electric moment because I'm not realizing that this was kind of part of the missing missing ingredient I've had ideas in the past of what I want to do and seen them but to say to sit down and then put those down have not been something I've done in the past to this level has made a big difference, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, there's a, there's a certain certainty in, in the vision board. Um, having, th- knowing first off what you, what it is that you want. Yes. Specifically. Yeah. Knowing uh, that is, is half the battle. The other thing is putting action behind the want, mm-hmm. you know, cause you have to emotionally want it as well. Yes, it can't be a um, it can't be a, a lukewarm feeling. Um, it's true. It it has to be all in. Yeah, I, I think when I was talking about my wife's chair, ooh, ooh look at that! <laughs> <laughs> I said it in, like she's already owns it. I uh, know, right? When you could feel a certain level of emotion mm-hmm. and and passion behind that want and i think that's critical to to get it because i was obsessed with that machine that tormach milling machine and no doubt about it and i dithered back and forth and you know everything but it had that emotion that passion that drive that that obsession almost with it and, and i'm not i'm not suggesting that you know being overly material is 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 a good thing but being selectively material? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, it has its, to me, it's not being over. I think it's a matter of just realizing, to me, it's not the end game. It, it allows you to do certain things it would not be able to do without that. And it allows you to fulfill certain, for me, mission that I believe that God has for my life and for mm-hmm. what he's called me to do. And, and to do that, you need the finances. So to me, it's all that I'm, hand in glove. I don't see it as a somehow like oh a person being, you know, materialistic or no, I see it as a part of the, the process and it's a necessary part of the process. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And you know, um ooh, twelve degrees. Um Wow. Yeah. Um there's this the uh, I briefly tell you this about a story that I, in a book I read called uh, uh, The Answer by John Azareff and Murray uh um Smith, uh, in that book, uh, it's one of the the opening stories, and it's, it's kind of vivid. Uh, they had just moved into a new house; it was a beautiful new house. You know, uh, their dreams had been coming true, and they were, you know, they were having success. And the father's unpacking the boxes with his young son, and you know, the son says, uh, gets to one box, and it says vision boards on it. And he says, "Daddy, what's this?" And the father explains to him, you know, what a vision board was and what, you know, the things that he put on it um, that were things that he wanted to achieve or, or, you know, receive. And the father takes out the vision board to show the kid. And uh, he immediately burst into tears. And his, his kid's confused. And he's like, Dad, what's wrong? What's wrong? And, you know, the father gets himself under control, and then, then he he hugs his, his son. Everything's fine, son. And he, he tells his son, 
back when I did the vision board, you know, five years ago, when I when I decided that I was going to go on this this quest to get you know what it was, I looked through magazines and I found what I believed was the perfect house for me, and I clipped it out and I put it on the vision board. And I really hadn't looked at the vision board in in, in a little while, you know, it had just been up on the wall and and everything. But uh, I want you to take a look at this picture, son. And he says, Dad, that's our house. And he said, he said, yeah. He said, I hadn't realized subconsciously that when we were out looking for houses, that I chose the house that was on my vision board from five years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, it, unbeknownst to me, I did not know this was the same house. I just knew that this house felt right when I, when I got here and that this was the one. And, you know, I, he hadn't looked at that vision board in a while, but they had moved into the exact same house that was on his vision board without his really consciously thinking about that. And, you know, the, the power of, of, of that moment must have been overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it shows you what is possible. It shows you that, you know, if imagine this kid, what if you were to set your mind to the things you want to do and put those things in place and you begin to just, you know, work towards, and it may not be every day, but somehow it's in your subconscious mind. I think I read something where how that um, some of your subconscious mind and it. Its ability to do certain things far beyond what you can ever thought about once you put something there and it, it doesn't stop working on those things. Yeah. And if you read that read yeah. that too. It doesn't stop no. Not, yeah, it, does, it, it doesn't stop working on those things. It's continuous to work on those things, even behind the scenes. Um, you're not realizing it's doing that. Mm-hmm. But it's working it's working behind the scenes for those things that you've placed there, you know. Yep. So I I you know I don't know how to explain all the many circumstances, conditions, uh, coincidences, and all the other stuff that made it possible for me to have that machine sitting in my garage right now. Mm-hmm. I can't explain it. I just know that that it is part of of the way the universe works. <laughs> and 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 it's there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. You know, you know, so that's all I've got to say on that. <laughs> no, but I think it's really going back, to going, you know, kind of going full circle to where we started about the whole idea of the different varying, varied approaches you can take towards these goals, these vision board ideas, and so on. And I think, you know, for me, um, which you know, goes back to, which I started saying earlier too, was which goes hand in hand, having put all this together is now saying, oh, I need to put my my um, um, content um, calendar, you know, sorry, um, as well, because producing, I was on the, the Kimanzi, going back to our conversation we had, and it was saying how, and I've seen also, I heard um, Amy was saying something very similar, very intentional, so whenever he writes an article for the first, say, next three months, or two months, or whatever the case might be. All those articles are, are written, the, the podcast, if he does in interviews, all that is geared up towards in it is leading to something. So he has these courses he does sell and um, help people with. And so everything he does is very intentional. So for this period, it would be like writing these articles, commenting certain things, putting the teasers and so on, and then bam, you know, he hits you because you've been kind of, softening you up to what's coming whether you're knowing and now you're like oh man i've been hearing about this whole thing about writing articles and traveling and all that oh by the way i have a class you know so having a content um, calendar it gives you control over your content what to do um specifically because it's leading somewhere it's not just have you know a smugs board idea it's all leading towards something you know mm-hmm Mm, interesting. I I think we probably need to uh, ad- adapt something similar because um, we tend to um, do with these episodes and, and 
um, podcast by Friday, uh, we tend to discuss what's on our mind versus, yes. you know, a sequential uh, series yep. that people can follow. And uh, it would do them a better service if we if we were more sequential. Uh, I, I agree. And then, as I'm saying, like, this whole thing has helped me to help me to realize the importance of that, you know, where before it's not that I wasn't, but it's, it's not, it was not as um, focused and it's more in clear view now than it was before. So I saw you put out your last uh, an episode recently with you interview someone from the, from the group, right? How, how did that go over or how's it going over so far? You, you don't know yet. Um, well, it just came out last night. Um, so in fact, late last night, um, so that's a great question. I'm I'm curious myself now. Uh, no, I, I, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it this morning. I think it was so. That's why I, I was okay. This was late last night. It came out. That's the reason why. Um, Three hundred and twenty-eight views, and I think I put this in thirteen hours. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great, man. Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten comments back yet on it. Um, sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Right. Um, I find that people enjoy the uh, the episodes where I interview somebody, and uh, this particular fellow, Mike Heydrich, was very um, animated during during the course and excited. Yeah. During the episode, so I, I think that'll come across well. Um, and I hope people enjoy it because it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, do you find that? Um, do you find that? Well, not then do you find how do you invite people to make comments within the group? So rather than just, you know, make comments, where they go into the group and specifically say, you know, I would like for you to come into the group and let's continue this conversation and make some comments as to what your takeaway was from this, this um, episode. No, I never have. Hmm. That's, that's a, an interesting thought. I may have to experiment with that. Yeah, and let's see what happens because you could take the conversation back there and you have an established group, so... That's why two minds are better than one. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you for that uh, suggestion. Of course, yeah. That'd be awesome, man. Yeah, I, uh, I'll have to, to test that one out and see um, if we get a response. I My group is very responsive as it is, uh, yeah, but yeah, that. I can imagine them uh, excited about everybody coming to share their takeaway, that what they would have said differently, mm-hmm. how they would have viewed certain things, and it'd be awesome to hear the hear the conversation. Yeah, well, the, this fellow Mike Heydrich um, took on a problem that uh, most people would consider insurmountable. So he wanted a maker space, which is, you know, an area where people could collaborate and work on their projects together. And so, you know, he's in a fairly large town. So he went to the, the town council and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, all the local government agencies that usually, you know, help with this kind of project. And he wasn't getting anywhere. You know, they're, oh, well, it's an expensive proposition and, you know, our tax money could be used elsewhere, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, he kept getting in the runaround. So he did that for about a year. And then he went out and he says, well, you know what? I've got land on my property and I always wanted a bigger shop. So he just built, had a big old pole barn built on on his property and started building his own maker space. In fact, he calls it his Mikey space. (laughs) <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the thought process that, that he went through on the whole thing and, you know, how far he's gotten, um, with it, you know, and he, his kids are helping him. Um, <laughs> like his eight year old daughter knows how to wire an electrical panel now, you know, wow, wow that's crazy <laughs> stuff like that. But, um, you know, he's, he's really living the dream. Uh, and he's, he's doing a lot of stuff through like, uh, recycling and reusing things and finding good deals. So I think it's a great episode because, you know, when you listen to him, he's, there's, he's got that. I won't be stopped attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I, I think it's really quite 
fun to listen, you know, how his, how his brain works. Cause it's different than most of us. <laughs> mm. yeah. so. That's, that's, that's not a very interesting, um, you know, episode where he, um, I think there's a lot of lessons that, that can be learned from that. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to give a shameless plug here. If anybody would like to listen to Mike Heydrich's story, they can go to cncroutertips.com slash four four. And that will take them to the episode. The number four, followed by a number four. Four four. Shameless plug. <laughs> that's okay. That's that's always you know, that's that's how it works really, you know. And I think people will not know unless you really let them know it's there. <laughs> yep. So, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I'm I think that, you know, that a number of, of, of downloads in, in, you know, that short period of time, that's pretty good. Some some guys never get 300 <laughs> listens to an episode, so. I agree. Yeah. Um, that's really good. Yeah, so anyway, it, it's uh, it's fun when you, when you put these things out, and uh, this, particularly for folks who've never been on a podcast. He'd never been on an episode before. And, you know, mm-hmm. he, he's just excited to be on there but i'll tell you the truth he's he'd make a great guest for any number of different podcasts for any number of different reasons but anyway i think like i said there's so many different stories different messages that can come around from that you know the what he decided to do because he couldn't find a space out there so he went and created his own, his own space to make it happen invite his family his kids to be involved in the process teaching them entrepreneurship, teaching them the business. I mean, having them so early to learn, this is, it's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> now will his, will his kids always be wiring electrical panels? Who knows? But the fact that they did it once, you know, yeah. With dad will make them, you know, think that it's, you know, it's possible in the future. And, you know, they, they, they hung cabinets on the wall. You know, the, the, he said at one point now, he's, you know, two young daughters, he says, I don't want the first time that they have to use a tool to be the first time that they've ever held the tool. Mm. You know? So, mm-hmm. you know, think about that when it comes to preparation. Uh, if, if you compare it to an email, for instance, if you're sending out an email or even creating a new podcast episode, you really want to be familiar with the microphone, the equipment and everything for that one time when you want to use it. And, you know, how do you do it? Well, through exposure, you know, through practice. And that's basically what he, what he's teaching there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also is a sense of um, confidence and responsibility and, to, you know, trust that he has in them to say, okay, I'm going to give you the, the tools. Now, you, you know, I've, You've watched, it's a, it's a, a sequence of um, learning that, you know, watch me do it. Then let's do it together. Mm-hmm. Then you would do it and I watch you. Yes. You know, and I think there's a sequence of that. And then the person's on to their own to deliver it, to duplicate that some other place and, and start a cycle over again. But that's what he's really doing right there. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. That's. That's the perfect um, teaching model for you yeah. know, teaching someone how to do a podcast to, um, uh, you know, whatever they, they want, you know, in in a properly done um, group environment. Watch me. This is how I do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let's do one together. That's mm-hmm. that personal coaching. Now I'll watch you while you do it. Yeah. Okay. And critique. And now you go do it on your own. Exactly. Yeah, it's that's what it all boils down to. It is. It is, and that's why I think for people who are not so proficient in their area of expertise, they will say they'll point to a mentor or a coach, someone who really helped them in that initial journey. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's how. That's how you um, you learn quicker more efficiently yep. and how you pass on a skill. And that's why I think people sometimes don't realize that to get from A to to Z, 
you can go through all the alphabets on your own if you want to, every letter, or you can have someone help you just to find a quicker way to get from A to Z, um, and still absorbing and getting to know all that happens in between much quicker, and you're you're more hands on. You're there longer than the person who's going to take their, you know, kind of claw their way through, and sometimes never make it to A to Z. And I think coaches and mentors come into play. Yep, uh, exactly it, man. That is exactly yep. the way it should be done. I agree. <laughs> okay, so we covered a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a uh, very much so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if somebody wants to get uh, more information from us about um, the topics that we covered, forming a mastermind group, or um, getting into personal coaching, how will they do that, Kingsley? Well, I think the best place, of course, is to just send us an email at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com. And as we read all of our emails and we make sure we personally respond, that's the best way to at least begin the conversation and begin the relationship. Mm-hmm. And you can also go and just join our Facebook group as well at facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday and begin the conversation or even continue the conversation there. Yeah. But I think the email is become more, is more personal for them to really reach out to us for, for coaching. Mm-hmm. And that is, uh, that is great. And they can also reach us through our website, which is podcastbyfriday.com. Yep. So lots of ways, no excuses, guys. Exactly. This is the section of our show where we would normally pause for a word from our sponsor. Now, if you would like to be that sponsor of the Podcast by Friday show and you have a product or service that you feel would be of benefit to new entrepreneurs starting their new podcast, then contact us at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com and we'll see if you'd be a good fit. Podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create your minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker. <laughs>